Welcome to part two of creating this animated asset preloader. Now yesterday we created this animated dripping milk loader for my wife's lactation consulting business where she helps breastfeeding mothers. And today we're going to create all of the JavaScript to create the page transition animation as seen here. Alrighty, I will stop talking and let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, everybody. So this is where we left off yesterday. Now, before we begin, just to commemorate this closure of this amazing tutorial series, our two-part series, I, I let the hair down. I'm very Jesus-esque right now, um, and I'm also a floating head. I, I have a green shirt on. You get just the head today. It's a, it's an exciting trick, you know. A lot, a lot of people get excited in YouTube comments. Um, see milk coming down from a look like a boob. Very strange. By the way, for those of you who don't know, this is um, a loader for. I may or may not use for my wife's lactation consultant business. She basically helps moms be able to breastfeed or something like that. So <laughs> I I just woke up, so I'm weird right now. Let's get started. All right, so where we left off, obviously if you haven't watched the first video, make sure to watch the first video because you're just jumping in the deep end otherwise. So we have a main.js file. We have, um, I was I was told that it's called vite.js for our bundler. I thought it was vite, you know, V-I-T-E, but apparently not. I'm still calling it vite. Anyhow, um, we're gonna step into here, our main.js file, which is empty. So in order to get it to basically download the assets and then provide us a callback in which we can initiate a green sock animation to create the page reveal, uh, we first need a couple of different packages to install. So we we'll use npm to install uh, something called GSAP, which is GreenSock Animation Platform. And once this is done, we will also install another one called uh, Images Loaded, all lowercase. One word, no spaces. Okay. Once you have those two installed, your package.json should look pretty much like this. Alrighty, awesome. So let's go to our main.js file and let's import both green sock and images loaded. All right, just like that up there. All right, so let's define a, a couple different things, uh, properties. So we're gonna create a const of a uh, loader or content rather, and that's gonna be equal to document.query selector and we're going to select our section element. All right, so this is the element that contains all of you know, the regular UI that we want to reveal. Um, we're also going to create another constant and that will be called, I. Uh, actually, we don't need to create another constant. We're good, Never mind. don't mind me. All right, so next uh, we're going to get all the images. All right, so, to do this, const image load equals images loaded. And of course, this is coming from up here, the images loaded library, and we pass in content. So what's happening here is we gain access to the section element, and then all images that it finds uh, in like the image tag and also background images, um, it's going to store in image load. Then we say image load on and it provides multiple uh, callbacks. One of them is done, like once it has downloaded all the images, then what do we wanna do? All right, so what we could do is just say uh, instance and then open that sucker up. Now at this point, we can use GSAP, all right? And there's uh, several different ways you can uh, tackle this approach. You could actually not use GSAP and just use the vanilla JavaScript array. Um, typically, if you have a site with a loader, you're gonna be using GSAP anyways. Um, um, you can also create a timeline to store all these, or you could just use the GSAP2 method or from method. We're gonna use GSAP2, and then we're also gonna use a timeline just to show you how to set that up. So the first thing we wanna do is hide uh, the actual SVG icon. So we'll say hide icon. We're gonna put GSAP2. Now the first argument uh, is going to be the selector. In our case, there's only one SVG element on our design, and so we're just gonna use the SVG HTML element to tag, and we're gonna scale zero, all right? So if I save this and we go back, 
it just hides immediately because uh, right now it's just loading everything pretty much instantly. Um, we can simulate this if we hit F12, go to the network tab, and let me zoom up for you, and we choose, oh, it, it's already fast 3G for me, um, but you have to have the, F, uh, the, the developer console open for that to actually work. So if I refresh this, it's loading, loading, loading. We have, a, we have a large image here, I believe, that I specified, or maybe I didn't. Yes, it's right here. So this is a big image that we have in the, the, uh, the actual HTML file. It's like a 425 kilobyte images from Unsplash, and it's, one, it's the one image that's loading. We don't see it because I, I put display none. I just did it for the purpose of, of having something for us to load. So you can see on a fast 3G connection, it'll be there for a couple seconds if it has to load like half a megabyte. Okay, so we did that. Now we wanna actually hide uh, or reveal the five different columns we set up here. It looks like a flat black around, which it is, but we have five different columns with the same color. So we wanna um, do a what's called a stagger animation to uh, reveal those. So what we do is say GSAP2, we'll say blinder, and we're going to say scale y zero. So put a comma. We're also gonna say stagger 0.3. Now there's, there's five of these, let's, let's come back over here. There's five of these blinders. So what we're gonna do essentially is um, 0.3 seconds between each of these, it's going to call and run these uh, animations here, uh, this scale y. So that way they're not all, it's, it's gonna, it, they're not all being animated at the same time. There's a 0.3 second delay between each. We're also gonna have ease. We'll use a custom ease power three out. You may be wondering where the hell did you get that information from? And you just go and type in green sock uh, easings. And then make sure you get the correct version. This is the correct version, not the number one result. You wanna make sure it doesn't say this is outdated. This is the newest one. Um, and so you can click on these right here uh, to, to get your custom easings, which affects just how the animation is presented. Down here is where the property is. So ease, elastic out, blah, 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 blah. So you can experiment with that. Changing the easings can greatly change the appearance of the animation. Um, so now let's go ahead and save that. And let's go back to our project and watch this. So exciting. <laughs> oh, it looks like we forgot some uh, CSS here because that's not supposed to be that ugly looking. Let's refresh. This will hide and then that will reveal. Okay, um, let's go back to our main.sass file. I want to make sure that we get this section properly tidied up. All right. Okay, so I say probably just underneath I uh, here. This is the markup for our section. So we're just taking the height using a calc function, 100 viewport height minus 20 viewport width, which is because we have a padding of on top of 20 viewport width. Uh, we also have a mask here. And again, overflow hidden. That's just to um, hide the text initially. You'll see the text just as a refresher here um, is both contained within a div class of mask right here. So we have the H1 and paragraph inside of it. Given an overflow hidden and then taking the H1 and the paragraph and doing translate Y a negative value will hide it initially. All right, so if we save this and then go back, here's what's gonna happen. We'll refresh and it's just gonna reveal nothing because we've hidden that H1 in the paragraph element. So we wanna bring those back. And the way we'll do that, of course, will be with GSAP as well. Now we could just use a another GSAP two, I, uh, right here, and just do one more, and we'd be done, and that's fine. Or we can also set up a timeline if you have more complex animations, uh, in which you want to chain multiple two methods from. So I'll just show you how to do that as well. So we create a timeline first. Const timeline equals GSAP dot timeline. By the way, if you want to, you can put defaults in here, like default settings, like so defaults like this. And then like if you wanna have the uh, a duration affect all of your chained to or from methods, you can just say duration, you know, 0.3 or something like that. 
you could do that as well. There's a bunch of default properties. You could just look at the docs. Um, now what we're gonna say is TL, and what I like to do is just put um, the, the name we've given it, and then we'll just tab in, we'll say two, and we can also for the selector, by the way, uh, we can specify multiple elements. So we can say H1, you just have to wrap, wrap them in an array of brackets essentially, uh, in a paragraph. Now, second argument is normal, it's just going to be the actual animations. So uh, for the H1 in the paragraph, remember we, re we reset the transform or reset the transform uh, y property to a negative uh, value so we don't see it. So we want to bring that back to zero. All right. We're also going to do stagger three or point three, a duration of two just to make it last a little longer because we're using a custom ease of power four out. All right. Now, if we want this to happen at a certain time or at the same time as the other ones, we can put a comma here for a third parameter and just specify third argument uh, zero right here. So let's save that, go back, it's loading, and notice how they come in. Let's try it again. And there you go. Another option um, is just to take these two elements right here, GSAP2, GSAP2, and just add them as a part, like right here would be the first one, and right here would be the next one. Uh, in fact, let's do that for the fun of it, um, just to see how we can refactor this and what changes we may need to make to the timing. So all I'm doing is just uh, putting these, chaining these together, and we'll go ahead and delete that one. All right, now I guarantee you it's not gonna work out as perfectly as intended. There's probably gonna be some um, changes we need to make. Oh, no, there's not. It's op it's obviously fine. I would I would have thought that we'd have to make some offsets for the, uh, the, the timing of things, but it's all still perfect. So you can just put all that into a timeline and it works as well. All right, awesome, awesome stuff. Now, additionally, there's another thing that you could do with this loader, um, with images loaded. You can have a progress bar. So say you have 15 pictures, uh, and you wanna have an animated progress bar come by, you can actually tie in to different methods or callbacks that the images loaded library uh, provides you, such as progress, I believe, um, and you can animate an actual progress bar. Um, it's a little bit more code. I, I'll probably save that for another tutorial to see if you can achieve it on your own. As always, make sure to subscribe. Check out designcourse.com, especially forward slash AF, which is the advanced front ends course. If you really wanna get into more of what we learned in these last two videos, definitely check out that. I, it's gonna be released here sometime this year, and you're gonna learn JavaScript, GSAP, Barba.js, uh, 3JS, a lot of exciting stuff. So make sure you enter your email to be notified. Check out designcourse.com itself as well. Uh, we have a interactive UI UX course and a CSS course. Um, and yeah, thousands of students, everybody's learning awesome, fun times. All right, everybody subscribe and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.